pile of bear dung. Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're just wandering out through the bush here. We're not too far from where I live. Just a bit of a walk. And uh, I've been seeing a lot of videos lately, of, well, for quite some time actually, about the uh, shelters and survival shelters, emergency overnight shelters and so on. And the more I watch them, the more it gets me kind of thinking about what's what they're really expecting somebody to do. And so today I think we'll come up with a little bit of a different opinion. I'm not saying that this is right and they're wrong, but this is more just uh, probably the way I would approach it up here. So uh, we'll get on with it's raining here a little bit. About an hour ago it was freezing rain, an hour before that it was snowing. We're really getting our fair share of variety today. But I guess that's probably appropriate for the type of conversation we're about to have. We're not talking here about a shelter that's, uh, that you're going to use for two or three days or perhaps return to from time to time as a, as a sort of a temporary or fr uh, occasional camp out. What we're talking about is a shelter that's strictly just for an emergency situation uh, and that, that can be a lot of things, you know, you can be out hunting a lot of times when you're hunting um, The animals are out late in the evening just about dusk um, If you harvest a large animal at that time of day um, By the time you track it even if it's only for 20 or 30 yards in heavy timber um, You give it a bit of time to make sure it dies you track it down um, You field dress it it can easily take an hour or more depending on the size of the animal and if that's the case uh, and because they typically come out right about dusk, uh, you could very, very easily find yourself out in the bush uh, after dark. And depending on, as you can see how dense it is here, and, and there's little branches everywhere, trying to walk out after dark um, is a good chance to trip over a log and hurt yourself. Uh, it's a good chance to get poked in the eye by something. Uh, you, you know, especially if you're trying to drag out, you know, a couple of hundred pounds or more of, of whatever it is you've harvested. So we don't really want to be doing that. So you may find that you just want to put yourself uh, in, a, in a spot where you're going to stay there uh, overnight until you can get yourself out um, f more safely and, and without you know, any danger. Those are my dogs over there. We're standing here talking and uh, they're probably 18 or 20 yards in front of me. And they've come across a, where something has killed a moose. And so they're now chewing. There's not much left but some old bones. But they're, they're having some fun chewing on those while I'm spending some time chatting with you. The other thing um, that seems to sometimes be a concern, not so much for the people that you see uh, providing these shelters uh, and how to do it, but, uh, but maybe for the average person who is out just for a, an afternoon fishing on the river and, and end up being stuck up there because their outboard quits. Uh, and is that they don't have a tarp, they don't have uh, the materials to make themselves a shelter. A lot of times they may not even have the skills to do that. So what we're trying to do here is put together a system that is absolutely as close to being idiot proof as can be. And, uh, and we're getting more freezing rain and I'm going to have to move the camera. I'll be back in a moment. sitting on the branch right above it. Hopefully that'll get us through this. So I'm talking about something that you, that anybody could have in their pockets. You don't have to carry a bag. I've got a bag with me here today but that's just well for a leash uh, but mostly for my camera gear uh, because of the rain that we're getting right now. But two things that you can have in your pocket. Now one of the I carry mine in a little pouch but this is a pocket item. I just happen to carry it in a little pouch and that would be trash bags or even better than that um, would be the heavy uh, what do they call them the uh, contractors drum liners uh, which are basically extra big garbage bags but they're a heavier plastic as well um, those things are are a great lifesaver also in my little kit here but again this could be just in your pocket um, I have a well actually 
I have a small knife which I made. Now I know nobody's going to have one of these because I made this and, and you know the odd person is, is not likely going to have something like this. This little guy here. But uh, this is something that I carry around. But you know that's extremely sharp. Um, when you hold it like this with just, there we go, uh, two fingers and wrap it around and kind of put your thumb up where you might have jumping normally, you can get a pretty good forceful cut on that. And even if it was something like large game, um, I'm not talking about butchering it like you would a cow or something, but as far as getting the skin peeled back and hacking off a chunk that would be used for, for a meal or, or several meals or whatever, this definitely would do the job. Uh, hardly ideal, but something to do. Today, let's just use this as a striker. Uh, we forget the fact that it's actually a knife, but it could just as easily be any half decent quality pocket knife that you might possibly have with you. Um, Ideally, it would be a, a survival tool of some kind, like a, a Leatherman maybe, uh, or even a, a Victorinox knife that's got a few attachments. But at the very least, it's, it, you've got that. I also have a small ferro rod. Uh, I like the big uh, half inch by five inch ferro rods. That's usually what you see me with. The reason I have the large ones is because, again, and I keep coming back to the cold here, it gets so cold that if your hands are numb or if you've fallen in the water or any of those things that I've mentioned before, um, holding a little tiny ferro rod like this in your, in your fingers uh, is hard to do when your hands are half frozen. So, but this is, as I said, just, just my neck kit. So, you know, we got a little bit of, a little bit of spark that we can make. And that's really the, the whole part. The thing that I would do in a situation like that, I also have a little bag in here, one other thing, with uh, some Vaseline soap cotton balls, just two or three, just enough that, in, especially in weather like this, um, I have an almost certainty, if I can get even vaguely decent dry wood, I can almost certainly get a fire going. Um, underneath that, and I won't bother pulling that out, I've got a couple of little pieces of birch bark shredded up down on the bottom there that I keep around. Um, for the same reason, just because, you know, as I walk through the brush uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I just pick up what I see and what I find that, that you know, I know I'm going to use at some point. And uh, it becomes kind of natural. You don't really even think about it after a while. So basically, this is, it could be a Bic lighter, you know, whatever you've got. But you want to have some way of making fire. Fire can be everything. Um, if you've got the trash bag, you can either slit it and pull it down over your head like a poncho. Um, if you get some, some boughs, um, leaves, whatever's available at the time, you can build yourself up off the ground so you get yourself away from the dampness. Um, get yourself a good six or eight inches off the ground. Ideally, I would try to put down some, some branches um, that will give you the springiness, a bit of loft, or larger branches, maybe you know two or three wrist size kind of thing, um, to get you off that damp ground and then cover it with boughs or leaves or whatever you have. Um, in fact, if you've got two trash bags with you, even better, because then you can take grasses and boughs and leaves and whatever and stuff one of them like a mattress and then use that to sit on and, and get comfortable with. That will get you uh, off the ground in a dry spot. The second trash bag, or the one if you've only got one, um, you can either slit it into one great big long piece and you've got essentially a, a thin tarp, or as I said, just pull it on like a poncho just by putting a little slit, you know, big enough to get your head through and you just pull it over upside down and your head comes out what would be the bottom and you've got yourself a poncho. And that's going to keep you dry and it's going to keep the wind off you. And that's critical. Um, you want to look around the area where you are um, without wandering around too much, but you want to look around and pick a spot that gives you a bit of shelter from the prevailing wind. Uh, in this case, north is off to my right, my right. Um, so the wind is going to come down this direction, so I want to be in amongst these trees where there's a lot of trees. There's a, there's a rock that I was sitting on earlier here, which it's a bit open, but it does give me a little bit of a, a windbreak if I hunker down under it. But basically I'd probably come in amongst the trees here where it's going to break the wind. And these trees go for miles, so this, this wind is, you know, it's going to break the wind pretty well. And uh, I would spend my time, rather than trying to build the shelter that we're talking about not doing, um, collecting firewood and I'll tell you you'd be you'd be shocked if you haven't done this before how much wood you can burn in any in a night in an open fire so get all the if you've only got two hours before dark um, don't spend a whole lot of time trying to build a shelter that's really only of minor 
10% value. Get that trash bag ready, get yourself a little spot where you can get up off that damp ground if, or, or cold ground, whatever it what is, and then spend your last hour or two hours or whatever and collect all the firewood you can possibly drag in. You don't want to be burning calories, burning energy, building a shelter that's only partially effective um, and then find out that you've got 15 minutes of daylight left and you haven't started getting your wood yet. You've got it backwards. You've got a shelter that's only partly effective and you really don't have time to get a fire going that's going to really give you some value. So spend your hour or your two hours or whatever you've got, get as much firewood as you think, then double it and then get some more because you know if there's some left over when you're ready to leave, so what? It, you know, no harm done. Uh, just leave it there. It came from there, so it's no. You're not leaving anything behind. It shouldn't be there, and you don't want to run out because you know it, there's nothing worse at three or four in the morning or five in the morning when it's actually the coldest, just before dawn, of running out of firewood and you're sitting there shivering, and that that's not nice. So, spend as much time as you can collecting your firewood. Get a good fire area put together. Um, if you can, get build yourself a fire reflector. They're not actually reflectors, but we won't go into that on this video. So build yourself something like that. Get yourself a real good area for fire and then start collecting buckets of firewood. As much as you can possibly acquire given however much daylight time you've got left. And once you've got that done and you've got your poncho, you can put that on in like 10 seconds. Um, you've already maybe built yourself your or, or acquired the necessary materials to build your little platform to get you up off the ground. You huddle down in there, you get your bag wrapped around you. If it drizzles rain, as long as you get a hat, uh, if it drizzles rain or if it rains or if even if it snows or whatever, you're going to stay pretty dry. You're not going to get soaked. You're not going to have to be concerned as much with hypothermia. You haven't burned up a pile of calories more than just collecting the wood, which is a lot of calories, but you haven't added additional effort to, to trying to build a shelter that's only partly effective in a very small part in my opinion uh, and that's going to give you the best chance to get through a night and like I said we're only talking about getting through the next sort of eight hours kind of thing or ten hours or whatever um, this isn't a camp out it's not a camp site and it's not a place that you're going to plan on staying there the situation changes if you end up feeling well you know I'm not going to get out of here for four or five days that's a different story. If it's late in the evening, still get yourself through the night. Make sure you're in good shape. And then the next day, put together something where you've got more time to put together a, a shelter that's, that, where you can get bark and more materials to make it more windproof than it, that you could just in an hour of quickly throwing stuff together. You'll be way better off. So that's my opinion on, on how I would want to spend my time, um, how I would want to spend my energy uh, in a situation where I knew it was a very, very short-term thing, I'm here for just a few hours, I need to get through it, I need to be warm and I need to be dry, and two ways to do that is to have some kind of a cover, and as I said, your clothing is your first cover. You should, you know, if, if you go out, you know, in a t-shirt and a light jacket on a day when you know that it's going to get cold or when it's going to be below zero at night, you're asking for trouble. You, you know, if anything goes wrong, and this is true in your car, if you put a light jacket on because you're just driving into you know to town and back, and in my case that to the nearest settlement is 40 kilometers one way, uh, and there's not much in between. So if I've got a light jacket on and maybe dress pants or whatever, and I drive into town and I'm halfway home and something goes wrong, I'm really not prepared. And if I don't have a lot of fuel in the car that I can keep it running all night, or or if the car fails, I can't do that. I, I got some serious problems. So you know don't do that. Make sure that you're prepared. And the only way to be prepared is to be properly dressed. Maybe if you've got a little haversack with you, throw an extra sweater in there or whatever the case may be. And that's going to be what really protects you the most. And then the trash bag and a good fire, um, it helps keep your morale up if nothing else. But a trash bag and a good fire will keep the wind and the rain off of you if, if that happens. Uh, the fire will certainly throw a lot of warmth and a, and a big enough bonfire will throw a lot of warmth even though it wastes a lot out into the area you're still going to throw a lot of warmth so something to think about just my my take on how things work um, it, it's just opinions you know it doesn't matter much but uh, you know something to think about everybody's got a new way of doing things or a different way of doing things and um, after 50 something years in the bush that's that's where I would spend my time and energy in that type of situation so I'm glad you joined me 
Uh, I'm getting a little bit wet myself, having <laughs> ironically, uh, because I've now taken my hat and put it over the camera. But uh, I'm glad you joined me. Um, if you have subscribed, that's awesome. If you haven't, I would appreciate it if you did. Click on the little bell uh, that, that means that you'll get notified every time a new video comes out. Um, by all means, leave a comment. I'd love to know what your opinion is on this. If you agree or if you really disagree, um, it's like I said, it's just an opinion. But it's, it's an opinion that I've based on a lot of years of experience in the far north of Ontario, Canada. So we get weather here for sure. And, uh, you know, in all those years, I've been out in it a lot. So thanks for joining me. And you all have a good week. And we'll see you the next time around.